What is up, YouTube? This is Smitty. Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, this is iHeart Games. I'm Smitty. I'm the founder, owner. Hey, one thing we do here is we always want to learn about health, science, biology, chemistry, how our body works, right? And so uh, oftentimes I will find myself relying upon my past. Like I was a triathlete. I did triathlon. I was on a bike 300 miles a week. I was running on a road. 30 miles a week at, at the height of my training. And I know quite a bit about fitness. I got hit by a car, lost all feeling on the left side of my body. My muscles atrophied, had to learn a new fitness strategy to build up back to normal. And I relied upon a lot of bodybuilding to help me get there. Now, in the process, I learned that there are two uh, various aspects of training and weight loss, et cetera. And they're often competing, in, but they, all, they often have different goals, but they're going about the biology of the body differently. And um, the outcomes are always going to be similar in how they're approached, but outcomes will be two totally different outcomes. One will be muscle size, the other one will be, you know, speed, basically. So anyway, enough about that. <laughs> enough about me rambling. I want to talk to you about cardiovascular disease in fructose. So I followed his doctor, Dr. Robert Lustig, and he talks about how fructose can be bad. Now, I just recently realized that B-complex vitamins help you metabolize protein, fats, and carbs, right? And I just realized that because most people are probably B-complex vitamin deficient, they may have issues with things like uh, fructose, right? So anyway, um, so basically, one of the theories that he that I got from his that I gleaned from one of his talks is that fructose can be inflammatory, right? And so, yesterday I ate fruit for the first time in a long time, and I didn't have any problems. And I supplemented with B complex vitamins. So whenever I take any B complex vitamins, I'll take I'll take them with food. And I had B complex vitamin, ate my fruit, had no ill effects, right? Actually, what's going what's going on is that. Um, B-complex vitamins help your body produce ATP and uh, ATP provides your body energy balance and your cells need energy balance to withstand, I guess, some of the inflammatory effects that fruit might have, I guess. So uh, fruit metabolism relies upon stable cells from what I understand right now. So anyway, let me get into the question that I asked my friendly chat TTP enabled app. I wanted to know how am I consuming fruits free your cardiovascular system of plaques. I ate fruit and I feel that, you know, some of the plaques came out of my uh, system today and I went, did my workout and I was able to work out on the bike doing 22 miles an hour. And I'm like, you know, I couldn't do this when I was 30 years old, basically, right? And so I'm thinking the fruit has something to do with it. Maybe the fruit helped clear some of the arterial plaques out of my system. This was my theory. This is a theory and here's my question. Here's my answer to my question. And I asked Chat GPT enabled app. I asked my friendly Chat GPT enabled app to cite relevant sources in MLA format, as I always do. And the response was like, consuming fruits can help reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease by clearing plaque buildup in arteries. Fruits are rich in antioxidants, which can help to reduce inflammation and prevent damage to the blood vessels. Additionally, the fiber in fruits can help to lower cholesterol levels, which can contribute to the formation of plaque in the arteries. Our friend Cali Muscle, everybody's friends, Cali Muscle, everybody knows who Cali Muscle is. He had a heart attack and now he's been eating a lot of fruit. And this is probably why, right? According to a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, consuming a diet high in fruits and vegetables was associated with a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. Another study published in the Journal of the American Heart Association found that consuming blueberries. Consuming blueberries and strawberries was associated with a reduced risk of heart attacks and lumen. In some risk, consuming fruits can help to reduce plaque buildup in arteries and lower the risk of cardiovascular disease. And there are three sources, sources there. And so I was like, okay, now I feel better. I'm riding faster. I'm performing at a higher level. What what gives, right? So I asked my friendly chat TTP able app to describe the mechanisms by which consuming fruits can help the body by clearing plaque buildup in arteries. In the site relevant sources in an format, consuming fruits can help to clear plaque buildup in arteries through various mechanisms. Fruits are rich in antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals that can help 
to reduce inflammation, prevent damage to blood vessels, and lower cholesterol levels. One way that fruits can help to clear plaque buildup in arteries is through their high content of polyphenols, which are a type of antioxidant. Polyphenols are, have been shown to improve endothelial function, which is the ability of blood vessels to dilate and contract properly. This can help to improve blood flow and reduce the risk of plaque buildup in arteries. In addition, fruits are rich in fiber, which can help to lower cholesterol levels. High levels of LDL cholesterol can contribute to the formation of plaque in arteries. Soluble fiber, which is found in fruits such as apples, pears, and berries, can bind to cholesterol in the gut and prevent it from being absorbed into the bloodstream. This can help to lower LDL cholesterol levels and reduce the risk of plaque buildup in arteries. Finally, fruits are also rich in vitamins and minerals such as vitamin C, potassium, and magnesium, which can lead to the which can help to reduce inflammation and prevent damage to blood vessels. Inflammation can contribute to the formation of plaque in arteries, so reducing inflammation can help to clear plaque buildup. In summary, consuming fruits can help to clear plaque buildup in arteries through their high content of antioxidants, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. And back to, you know, what Robert Lissick says, not to say that he's incorrect, you know, in a lot of ways he's correct. And Imagining he's looking at epidemiological, epidemiological data that uh, gives you a good idea of what things are right now. Necessar not necessarily how the actual mechanisms work, but what things are right now. So I asked a question to help clarify some of my perspective about fructose and inflammation. Uh, I asked my friend in chat, GT being able to have quality AI, how am I consuming fructose being inflammatory for some with a significantly low b complex vitamin status? Cite relevant sources in MLE format. Consuming fructose may be inflammatory for some individuals with a significantly low B complex vitamin status. Fructose is metabolized differently than glucose and can deplete B vitamins, which are essential for reducing inflammation. A low B complex vitamin status can exacerbate inflammatory effects of fructose consumption. One study found that fructose consumption can lead to a decrease in B vitamins, particularly B. Six, which is essential for reducing inflammation. The study also found that a low B vitamin status can exacerbate inflammatory effects of fructose consumption. Another study found that a high fructose diet can lead to an increase in inflammatory markers by individuals with a low B complex vitamin status. The study suggests that a low B vitamin status can exacerbate the inflammatory effects of fructose consumption and increase the risk of chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. In summary, consuming fructose can be inflammatory for individuals with significantly low B complex vitamin status. Fructose metabolism can deplete B vitamins. Let me say that again. Fructose metabolism can deplete B vitamins, which are essential for reducing inflammation. A low B vitamin status can exacerbate the inflammatory effects of fructose consumption and increase the risk of chronic diseases. And there you have it. Low B status can exacerbate inflammatory effects of fructose consumption, and also it can lead to an increase of chronic diseases. And these studies are from the 2014 and 2013, well, within the last 10 years or so. And so you have it, there are many things at play here. There is uh, B complex vitamins, there's fructose and there's, uh, fructolysis, uh, there's fructose and fructose metabolism, there's uh, Exercise. Exercise uh, helps the body recycle some of its nutrients, as I had in a previous video. So vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients can be recycled by the body, and usually the quantities will increase along with exercise and exercise increases. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you're looking for help with your fitness goals or reaching your wellness goals, seek a fitness wellness professional. If you want help from me, there's resources in this video on this YouTube channel and at iHeartGames.com. I'm Spady. I hope you reach your fitness goals, and I'll talk to you in the next one.